Hello and welcome to our third vlog on how to build effective in vitro assays for early drug discovery. When constructing a bioassay, there are several technical and practical steps needed to ensure it is robust, reliable and fit for purpose. In this vlog, we have outlined some key steps to help optimize your finished assay. When building a bioassay, you will have chosen to go down one of the two routes, target-based or phenotype-based drug discovery. But what are the considerations that need to be made for each of these approaches? In target-based drug discovery, you need to identify not only the type of target activity you want to measure, but also how your bioassay will measure this. It is also worth thinking about whether to measure the activity at the end of the experiment or throughout the experiment. In phenotype-based drug discovery, you need to assess whether the biological readout is directly related to the engagement of the compound with the target or is it reporting on a component of the pathway instead. Will you need additional bioassays to increase confidence in the outcomes? Many practical aspects need to be examined to ensure that you're using the right approach to successful drug discovery. In this video, we have outlined seven key considerations. Plate format. Choosing the best plate format depends on how many compounds you need to test and the cost of your reagents. Using plates with a higher number of wells will allow you to use smaller volumes of reagents, decreasing the cost and increasing throughput. Plate type. Assay plates can be black, white or transparent and each is better for different assay types depending on the readout methods. For example, white plates are great for luminescence assays whilst black plates work well for fluorescence assays. Final assay volume. Several things need to be considered in relation to assay volume but essentially this comes down to the availability of your reagents and the final desired concentration of both these and the compound in each well of the plate. Assay homogeneity. Homogeneous assays involve fewer steps, are faster to execute and are more reproducible, making them great for high throughput screening and automation. Reagent addition and combination. The volume and concentration of each reagent required in the final assay, along with the order you should add them to the plate and the dispensing method are all important aspects to be aware of. Reagent stability. Factors that might affect reagent stability include temperature, light sources and environmental components such as plastics used throughout the bioassay. Compound addition. Compounds are generally dissolved in DMSO, but consider optimum concentrations required for your assay. If this is too concentrated, you may observe solubility issues with the compound. By following these steps, you can build great bioassays for your drug discovery needs. But remember, your bioassay must deliver statistically valid and reproducible data. So, in the next vlog, we'll look at how you can ensure the reproducibility of your assay using quality controls and assay validation procedures. Follow the link in the description to download our free ebook for more insights. Contact us to learn about our capabilities and services and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos.